one of the best videos on my channel is where I go over things that you should do before hard mode, but that was only five minutes worth of tips and ideas. So I decided to make a part two to it that has a lot more things for you to do before hard mode. For my first tip, let's go over some items you should try and get before hard mode, starting with items that give you useful buffs. Campfires, heart statues, and honey will give you some health buff to you while you're near them, so placing these around your main base and boss arena is something you should definitely do. Bast statues are also another great item to place in those areas, since it will boost your defense by 5, but it will need to be turned on. Now that we got the buff items covered, let's go over the weapons and accessories that I think you should get before hard mode. Now, these won't be class specific, since that'll need to be a video of its own, but just overall great items that will help you out in both modes. First up, we have the Knight's Edge, which is a powerful sword needed for the Zenith, and is crafted with the pre-hard mode swords I have on screen now. The Blade of Grass can be crafted with the jungle materials I have on screen now, the Volcano can be crafted with 20 Hellstone bars at an anvil, the Muramasa can be found in locked chests in the dungeon. And finally, depending on what evil biome you have, you will either craft the Light Spain or the Blood Butcher at an anvil using your evil biome ore. You should also try and find an Enchanted Sword and Star Fury, since they are pretty good pre-hard mode. The Star Fury can be found in chests on floating islands, and the Enchanted Sword can be found in shrines underground. If you can't find one of those swords though, you can use the seed I cover in this video to get them, assuming you're watching when 1.4.4 is still the current update. As for armor though, you'll probably want to go ahead and get the Molten Armor, which will give you a ton of useful buffs, and can be crafted using the recipes I have on screen now. Getting to the accessories now, we have the Terra Spark Boots, which give you a ton of amazing buffs, like walking on liquids, allowing you to fly, and a few other things but it has this big crafting recipe, which I have on screen now. Most of these items can be found throughout your world, but if you're having trouble finding certain items, you can use the seed I covered in this video, which shows you where most of the items needed to craft it are. Moving on, if your world's difficulty is set to master or expert, your evil biome's boss will have a really good accessory. If you have the corruption biome in your world, then the Eater of Worlds will drop the Worm Scarf, which will reduce all damage taken by 17%. If your world has the Crimson Biome though, then the Brain of Cthulhu will drop the Brain of Confusion, which will give you a chance to dodge attacks, confuse enemies after being hit, and will temporarily increase your critical hit chance after dodging. There's only one pair of wings that you can get before hard mode, which are the Fledgling Wings that are found in chests on floating islands, and can also be found in two crates. You should also try and get Chester. This has a 33% chance to drop from Deer Clops and is a pet that acts like a walking chest, giving you a good bit of extra inventory space. And finally, we have the Magic Mirror and Conch. The Magic Mirror can be found in chests anywhere in the world and will teleport you to wherever your set spawn is. The Magic Conch can be found in desert chests and crates and will teleport you to one of the oceans. You can also find the Ice Mirror in snow chests and crates, but it'll do the same thing as the Magic Mirror, so it really doesn't matter which one you find and use. The next tip is a simple one, but can still help out a ton, which is exploring as much of your world as possible. Knowing where certain biomes and other things are in your world will help you out when you need them in the future, and it'll be even better if you already have a small base there as well. I like to make a little base in every biome and special locations, like the dungeon, which allow me to place items that give me buffs, allow me to safely wait if I need something specific to spawn, and can be the perfect place for a a pylon or teleporter. Your world also has a ton of loot that's really only useful pre-hard mode, and you can only find those by exploring your world, especially underground. Moving on to the next tip now, which is learning potions. Outside of the few potions you can find in chests or dropped from enemies, you probably won't ever use any of the other potions available to you, even though they're super useful. Before we get into the actual potions though, you will need something like an herb farm using planter boxes, and either the alchemy table or a placed bottle. The herb farm will give us some of the materials needed for potions, and the placed bottle will allow us to craft every potion, and is made by just placing one of these items on a platform or workbench. The alchemy table also allows you to craft any potions, but it will also have a small chance to not consume your materials when making potions. 
with it being able to be found in the dungeon after Skeletron, or has a rare chance to be fished up. Getting to the actual potions now, which are things like Iron Skin Potions, which increase your defense, Regeneration Potions, which increase how fast you regen health, the Swiftness Potion, which increases your speed, Return Potions, which allow you to teleport to your spawn and then back to your original location, and a few other neat ones as well. Crafting them yourself isn't the only way to get potions though, as you can also get a ton of good ones from fishing, but I'll cover that later on in this video. Getting to the next tip now, we have Shimmer Transmutations. This is a new feature added in the last update, but it's actually one of the most useful things in the game. Shimmer can be found in the Aether Biome, which is always under the ocean on the same side as your jungle, and will do one of two different things when you throw items into it. The first being where the item decrafts itself, with the items needed to craft it popping back out. But this doesn't apply to every item, as some will have special changes. These are things like the various permanent upgrades, changing the type of ore you have, and a few other useful things. Some item changes aren't available in pre-hard mode, and some even require you beating Moonlord. But it's still great to change out items when you're in a pinch. Just like I did in my Billionaire video, where I turned mushroom seeds into jungle seeds. While I don't have time to cover the rest of the item changes with Shimmer, since there are just so many, you can find all of them listed on the Shimmer wiki page. Moving on to the next tip now, we have fishing, which may seem pretty boring at first, but it can be extremely useful in pre-hard mode. The main use you'll get out of fishing is crates, which can give you a ton of great items, like rare weapons like the enchanted sword, almost all of the ores, great potions, and much more. These crates allow you to skip certain parts of the game, like mining, herb collecting for potions, and having to make or find certain weapons. You are able to fish in almost any body of water, assuming it's big enough, which includes honey and lava, with each type of liquid and biome giving you different loot. Fishing in the jungle can give you the anklet of the wind, flower boots, a boomstick, and even most of the beginner ores. Fishing on floating islands can give you sky crates, which can drop fledgling wings, the star fury, a shiny red balloon, and the lucky horseshoe. There's a few other great crates to go for as well, but we still need to talk about how to make the fishing process way easier by boosting your fishing power. The easiest way to fish is to get some of the fishing related items I have on screen now, which will all boost your fishing power so you can get better loot. And if you get lucky enough to find and catch a gold worm, you can throw it into Shimmer to get a permanent fishing power boost. You can also sit on a toilet to get a small boost in fishing power, so I usually build a small base around my fishing ponds in each biome so I can safely sit on them. We'll stop with the fishing stuff for this video, since it's long enough to take up a video on its own, which I already did. There are a few bosses, like Deerclops, King Slime, and more that you can technically completely ignore, but actually have some loot that's worth getting, starting with Queen Bee. This is a boss you can find throughout your underground jungle biome in beehives, and has drops like bee grenades, which can easily beat Skeletron and the Wall of Flesh. The Bee Armor, which allows you to have an extra minion. The Beekeeper Sword, which is great for this stage in the game. And a few other neat things as well. If you're having trouble finding Queen Bee spawners in your world though, you can always make a world using the seed, not the bees, which is a secret seed that'll have the Queen Bee spawners placed all over the world, including the surface. If you're having issues actually beating Queen Bee though, then you can just hook up a mimic statue near where you battle Queen Bee, and the mimics will end up destroying Queen Bee within seconds. King Slime is another boss you should try and do, with it being able to be summoned after killing 150 slimes during Slime Rain. Or you can make it summoning item using the recipe I have on screen now. Unlike Queen Bee, King Slime really only has two good drops, which is the Slime Mount and Hook. This mount will allow you to jump on and deal damage to enemies, float in water, and will decrease the amount of fall damage you take. The Slime Hook will allow you to grapple anywhere, and is one of the first hooks you're able to get in the game. Beating King Slime is also how you unlock the Nerdy Town Slime, which you will need if you're trying to 100% complete Terraria, or at least get all of the achievements. And for the final thing I'm gonna cover in this video, we have a few things you can only do or get in pre-hard mode. Most of all of these are things only collectors will care about, 
but I still felt like I should mention them here anyway, just in case any of you guys want these items. First up, we have the Grey Zappinator, which can be bought from the Traveling Merchant, but once in hard mode, the Traveling Merchant will stop selling it, and instead sell the Orange Zappinator. After that, we have the Cascade Yo-Yo, which has a 1 in 400 chance to drop from enemies in the underworld, but only in pre-hard mode. And finally, we have some banners, which are obtainable in hard mode, but are easier to get in pre-hard mode, since different enemies spawn, which are the Blue Jellyfish and the Wall Creeper banners. And that wraps up this video. While these were just my tips, be sure to let me know in the comments what you like to do before hard mode. And also, check out the first part of this video, which is on screen now. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Terraria content like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.